Hey everyone, uh, we have a nice conversation to have here about Skyward Sword and how it's actually a bigger improvement uh, performance and visual wise than maybe we initially thought and even I initially thought when watching the trailer. Now, throughout this video, we're going to be having side-by-side -side comparisons of Skyward Sword's Wii version versus what we got with the Skyward Sword HD trailer. Obviously, caveat, it's an advertisement trailer. Who knows if it's really representative of the final product. We obviously hope it is or hope it's even better uh, than what we got in the trailer. But I want to get into this because, honestly... There is still a massive debate over the pricing of this game. And I don't actually think, despite it looking better than uh, you might think it does, or be a bigger improvement than you think it is, that that debate's going to go anywhere. But we'll talk about that in a moment. First off, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. We are giving away a $99 Nintendo Switch eShop gift card. Head on to the description or the pinned comment. Without further ado, let's get into our first comparison. Now, all of these comparisons are going to be coming from other people's YouTube channels. I'll be linking to each uh, comparison if you want to hear any of their commentary on it or any of their music or sound that they play along with it. Uh, this is just not because I'm trying to be lazy over here. One, I just want to show you multiple different comparisons. Two, I no longer own a Nintendo Wii or Wii U, so I don't actually have the ability to capture my own Skyward Sword footage. And unfortunately, uh, I didn't really make a video walkthrough for this back in the day when I ran Zelda Informer, so I don't have any local footage, uh, even from back in those days, to try to create a comparison of visuals. So thankfully, the rest of YouTube has already done this for us quite easily. We can get multiple angles from side to side to uh, partial screen views to whatever we end up going without the, throughout the conversation that I decided to hold here. So one thing I came away when watching all these different videos is the resolution bump actually matters. Now, I talked about how the Skyward Sword art style was created in a way to look good on blurry screens because at the time the Skyward Sword came out, and A.G. Onomo knew this, most people at that point had an HD television, at least 720p, most people at 1080p. Remember, this was happening about a decade ago, and at that point, most people had converted off of their CRTs and were now into flat screen, uh, you know, HD TVs. So that had become kind of the standard in the home by the time this game came around. And Eiji Nomo knew this. So what he wanted to do was put an art style in this game that made the backgrounds uh, look good despite being blown up. So I take it a 480p image and blowing it up to 1080. He wanted it to still look good. So he went with this painter-esque art style that made it where it didn't really matter if the game was HD or not. The background was still going to look basically the same. And for the most part, when you look at these comparisons, the background, we're talking the sky, objects way off in the distance, for the most part, don't look incredibly better. But honestly, side by side, the difference is much more pronounced than I expected. Now, I've seen Skyward Sword in HD. I've seen it on uh, emulator. I've seen it up to 4K even. So I know how much crisper an image can look just by increasing resolution on it and you know updating textures to take advantage of that resolution increase. And while I don't really feel like there's been much texture work specifically done with Skyward Sword because there likely already were HD assets that were being downsampled to 480. I do think that it's interesting seeing that the differences are more pronounced than I expected. The game definitely looks significantly better, in my opinion, uh, in 1080p than it ever did in 480p. Now, this isn't to mean it's going to look incredible. This isn't going to be the kind of stark differences we saw with, say, well, the Wind Waker back on GameCube versus the uh, remaster, re-release, hd of it on, uh, the, on well, <laughs> Wii U. Why? Because... Nintendo actually went through and replaced all the character models uh, and redid some of the looks, used the new engine on it, or at least an updated engine. It was still technically the same engine, but it was an updated version of the engine. And they added Bloom and all these other effects, first-person mode, technically. Uh, and they did all this because they were experimenting with HD Zelda development at the time. So they were trying out a bunch of different techniques that obviously would lead into the next Zelda game, 
uh, which was Breath of the Wild. So the interesting thing is they used the Wind Waker as an internal testing ground, hence why it actually has a lot of different things going on in it compared to, say, Twilight Princess HD, which Nintendo tasked Tantalus with doing, which literally was like a retexture HD port. Yes, they technically added new content with an amiibo, all that jazz, we know, but for the most part, it was a rather simplistic port job in comparison to the Wind Waker. And now we get to Skyward Sword HD, where, to be honest, it is maybe the simplest port job they have done yet. Kinda. So, if you think about the uh, Twilight Princess and how they brought that over and they kind of, Tantalus kind of retextured things in a way. Well, it's really hard to retexture Skyward Sword uh, beyond character models. And as you're seeing some of the models here, you can definitely tell that there's been some slight alterations to the models to make them look a bit better in HD. So, there's definitely been some texture work done on the actual character models. Uh, but it's hard to do much about the blurry uh painter style background without just completely changing the art style so you're kind of stuck with it uh in a sense it, it does look better in hd of course but uh you're not going to be able to massively improve it without fundamentally changing the art direction of the game however this is the first zelda game and this is just i don't know why people aren't uh paying more attention to this because they talk about how there's no quality of life improvements right well they added uh more accurate motion controls they have taken the hud and massively shrunk the hud to actually make it uh usable if you guys remember in the original wii version of skyward sword and maybe you don't because you didn't play it uh the hud was huge it took up a majority of your screen it was like over 50 percent of real estate was spent on the hud it was insane, and yes, there was an option to turn the HUD off, but people often needed the HUD to be reminded of what items they put on which button on, or, or which uh, thing on the D-pad and, uh, you know, uh, what buttons attack and what is shield. Like, people needed reminders, and that's what HUDs are for, are to remind you. It was nice to be able to turn it off, but still, people mostly just turned it off either to record a really crystal clear gameplay session or to get a screenshot. Um... I like the fact they shrunk the HUD down. I like the fact that they did technically work on improving the motion controls. And they did map it to a controller and do all the testing necessary to make that work as well. So Nintendo did do quality of life improvements there. But the biggest quality of life improvement is, did you guys know, factually, this is the first traditional 3D third-person perspective over-the-shoulder uh, Zelda game to be in 60 FPS. Breath of the Wild didn't do it. Breath of the Wild struggles to maintain 30. When they ported the Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD to Wii U, they also still ran at 30 FPS. Oh, what about Ocarina of Time 3D and Majora's Mask 3D? 30 FPS. They have been using a 30 FPS target for Zelda games for a long time. Now, the original NES Zelda back in the day was 60 or 50 if you were in those 50 hertz days uh, out in Europe back when they were using a different standard for some reason. Uh, but reality is Zelda hasn't been at 60 FPS very often. Nintendo did bring it back with some of the handheld entries. So A Link Between Worlds is a crisp 60 FPS. But the thing is, 60 FPS matters. Uh, it is a massive difference. And from what we saw in the trailer, it looks like a locked 60 FPS. We were not going to know for sure till the game is in our hands, but it's probably a locked 60 FPS. And so instead of taking some of the capabilities of the Switch and really pumping a lot of work into redoing every minute detail of the world, they chose to take the performance increase going from a Wii to a Wii U and put it into the frame rate. It is no small feat to just double the frame rate of a game and have it run smooth at that given frame rate. In fact, there's a lot of things you need to adjust in the code base to actually make the gameplay work well because the gameplay was built with 30 FPS in mind. To bump it to 60, sometimes the timings on things are slightly off. So they would have had to fine-tune the game to even run at 60. And the thing is, I have to start to think, do we really want them to do... You know, here's, here's where I'm, I'm kind of stuck in this conversation. Nintendo had a choice. Tantalus or whoever did the port had a choice. They could have focused on making it possibly a little bit better visual looking, some more bloom, some more of this, things that make it look more current, right? They could have focused on that, and gave us 30 FPS, just like we got with, with Twilight Princess HD and the Wind Waker HD. Or they could give us a smoother gameplay experience and give us 60. I think all of us can agree 
60 FPS is way more preferred than something that maybe is a bit more visually stunning. In fact, I think what's so great about a potential Switch Pro coming is that while Breath of the Wild 2 is going to be on the OG Switch, one of the big differences between the Pro model and the current Switch and Switch Lite is that it could be at 60 FPS for that game instead of 30, which to me makes a massive gameplay difference. 60 FPS gets more accurate controls, more crazy things can happen, the game just feels smoother, feels tighter, uh, and it just ends up being a better gameplay experience. So, Fundamentally, Skyward Sword is the first 3D Zelda game at 60 FPS, which means it should be one of the tightest controlling Zelda games to date. So they, they did that improvement, which is a massive, massive quality of life improvement that people are just overlooking. In addition to, yes, the game actually visually looks a lot better in HD than it did on the Wii. I think people are just seeing still screenshots and being like, hey, look at this still screenshot. Haha, ha, it doesn't look that good. But watch the game in motion. It definitely is a marked improvement. So this obviously comes back to the conversation of, hey, Skyward Sword HD is $60. Is it really worth $60? And we've had num a number of conversations on this. And I think the grand takeaway from this is it's worth $60 if you're willing to spend $60. If you're not willing to spend $60, it's not worth it. There is no right or wrong answer to this. There is a what you would prefer. You could try to make it a question of morality. But this is what Nintendo has done. It only honestly feels bad in light of the fact that Mario Galaxy, which to many people should be even a higher valued game from Nintendo, was given HD treatment and tossed on a collection pack for 60 bucks, getting two other games to go with it. And in hindsight, yeah, that actually does look like, you know what? Yeah, Skyward Sword HD feels overpriced when you consider Mario Galaxy had two other games packed with it. But at the same point, I'm going to spend 60 bucks, and I'm spending an extra $80 buying Zelda Joy-Cons. Skyward Sword, to me, is one of the best Zelda games ever released. I recently did a listing uh, through live stream of, of all 35 Zelda games. That's right, 35 Zelda games. Not all of them are canon, but all of them uh, were licensed by Nintendo, basically. Uh, including things like, you know, just, just to toss it out there, Cadence of Hyrule was on that list. Uh, Twilight Princess Pit Cross. Anyone remember that game? That's on the list. Thanks. Crossbow Training. All of the CDI games were technically licensed by Nintendo. So they're on the list. So yeah, it's a rather big list. 35 games for 35 years of Zelda. Uh, so I didn't even realize uh, when I was first collecting all the data for it that there was that many games, even though I've technically have tried every single one of them in one form or another. I mean, we got online Zelda games back in the 80s and BS Zelda and Ancient Stone Tablets. So, like, there's just some crazy stuff in Zelda's history that I went through. But I'm not so sure there is a good answer. What I can tell you uh, about the $60 price tag is Nintendo isn't screwing anyone over. Nobody has to buy games. Buying games is an optional entertainment medium. We all want games to be cheaper. It's one reason why I love Game Pass on the Xbox Series X, because it fundamentally makes playing games cheaper, especially if you're interested in the games they put on that service. It's just like Netflix. Why did Netflix blow up? It's not just the convenience of live streaming. It's it made consuming a ton of media cheaper than traditional cable combined with HBO and renting movies at that time. They made it cheaper and that's exactly what game pass is doing so fundamentally we all kind of want things to be cheaper whether we're okay with spending 60 bucks in skyward sword hd or not but at the end of the day what really matters is do you have a great time playing the game you choose to spend your money on whether you spend five dollars ten get it for free free to play fortnite spend 60 for a port hd remaster uh by breath of the wild 2 uh, you know, spend, what was it, 50 or 40 bucks, whatever it was, uh, for Miles Morales, uh, or unless you got like the $70 edition or $80 edition, I can't remember where it came with, uh, the PlayStation 5 version of, uh, the original game, no matter what you end up spending on your games, what matters is, are you getting enough entertainment value out of that game for the money you spend? And that honestly is a question that is entirely up to the individual. 
Nintendo's going to do what Nintendo does. Other companies are going to do what other companies do. The only anti-consumer practice Nintendo really has going on right now is a knowable, fixable issue with Joy-Con drift that Nintendo is refusing to do anything about, at least up to this point, and have barely acknowledged in many cases, and sometimes even denied it before the lawsuits started landing. So at the end of the day, that's Nintendo's giant asterisk of an anti-consumer practice right now. Charging $60 and valuing their games at a certain valuation, that's not anti-consumer. It's just not what some people feel they should be doing. Maybe because of the pandemic. Maybe because of Mario Galaxy being packed in with two other games. Maybe because they don't think there's been enough done with Skyward Sword HD to justify a $60 price point. Which, we should note, the game doesn't come out till July. We don't really know everything they've done with the game i'll give you a prime example amiibo functionality is included but we did not see any amiibo functionality in the trailer we also did not see uh you know any mention of amiibo functionality in the original game because there wasn't any amiibos there was no functionality back in 2011 so there could be more to the puzzle that we don't know so until we get the full picture, until the game's here, until we can decide for ourselves if it was if our entertainment value was worth the money we spent on it or didn't spend on it, uh, I feel like that conversation is something best that we return to after the game comes out. Until then, I am Nathaniel Robojans from Nintendo Prime. I hope you enjoyed this fresh look at Skyward Sword, Wii version, uh, HD version, side by side, the conversation I had along the way. Uh, and, you know, I'm not here to convince you that to buy the game. I'm not here to convince you uh, what to do with your own money. I just like talking about Zelda. And if you made it this far in the video, I guess I might as well tell you I am going to attempt to have a, a Zelda video come out every single day, uh, either until Breath of the Wild 2 releases or until we get to the 36th anniversary. So potentially 365 straight days of Zelda videos. Um, you might think that's insane. But keep in mind, I used to come up with conversations about Zelda every single day for four years straight. Doing it for one year won't be too bad. Maybe. For now, we have so much to talk about with Breath of the Wild 2. I could theorize. Uh, I could bring in conversations. Thursday, I already know. We have a Zelda uh, episode of the podcast coming out. So, like, that video is already taken care of. It's Monday, so i got to come up with two videos before Thursday. I think I can pull that off. All right, folks. I'll catch you in the next video.